Joining us now with more, Florida Congressman Byron Donalds is with us. Sir, how are you? Great to have you. I'm doing good, Sean. Well, good to be with you. I got to see some clips of you later. You were up against, what, four or five liberals all at once. It's like, uh, you know, four or five on one. But you got your points across. What is it about Donald Trump, or any conservative for that matter, that seems to trigger the mob and the media? Uh, it's because when you have conservatives who are committed to the facts and frankly who are not afraid to dish those facts out left and right. You mentioned last right last night it was four, five, six, ten. The number doesn't really matter. When you're prepared with the with the right information, the truth, and you're not afraid to dish it out, they don't know how to respond to that. So the immediate thing is they typically lash out. Look, last night, you know, I'm just trying to make a comment and already three, four, and five of them are trying to jump in. But you gotta stay focused because at the end of the day, the truth of what is happening in this country is what matters more than anything that, that that silly reporters try to talk about. I mean, look at our current president. This guy has three bank failures and has lost three embassies on his watch. That's a disaster for America. And so it requires Republicans and conservatives to be strong in this position, be armed with the facts, and go into any, any situation and don't take their bait come with the facts and push back hard. And this network is known for lying for three long years, being wrong about so-called Trump-Russia collusion that never happened. We got it right on this program. Uh, thankfully, we've been vindicated now many times, starting with the Horowitz report. Uh, let me ask you specifically about what town hall should be about, um, because I felt like Caitlin Collins was really doing a job for, the, for her fellow, quote, journalists that are not journalists. They're talk show hosts like me. They're just not honest. Um, and not for the people, because I think if you ask somebody, a, a candidate, a question, whether you agree with the answer or don't agree with the answer, why don't you let them finish the answer and then do a follow-up question and say, well, then why didn't A, B, or C happen? Uh, why did she feel that she had to be the special pleader for all things left, left wing? I mean, well, look, personally, I think it was her or her own Super Bowl. I mean, look, Caitlin's been doing this a long time. I've done interviews with her uh, on that network, and I think that this was her time in, in the spotlight being opposite the number one guy in our party being Donald Trump. So I think that's part of it. Number two, it was clear that CNN's position was to do anything they could to keep bringing up all of the old stuff, all of the narratives that they continue to push, and to ignore the realities of what's happening in America today. And so I credit President Trump for, frankly, keeping his composure with this onslaught from her and being focused on the things that matter to the voters of our country and not to the political class and not to the punditry yeah. uh, that, frankly, has gotten it wrong so much more than it's gotten it right. And by the way, have we not litigated January 6th to death? Have we not litigated the 2020 election to death? Uh, aren't elections about the future? Uh, we now have an economy where 60% of our fellow Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Uh, do we not see China on the march? Uh, no consequences for a spy balloon that flew all around our country. No consequences for Russia uh, taking out one of our drones. Uh, no, no active uh, response by Joe Biden when you have an alliance of China, Russia, Iran. That should scare every American, in my view. No, you're absolutely right. But the press, especially the liberal press, they can't focus on the present. Look at what we brought out through the Oversight Committee under the leadership of James Comer. We've documented that Joe Biden and his family have taken money from the Chinese and from Romania. We've documented that. They don't want to talk about that. They don't want to talk about the southern border. All the things, Sean, that you talk about, the only thing that will keep their agenda alive, and at the end of the day, America, it is about the radical left agenda for the press. It's about that agenda. Agenda. And the only thing that keeps that agenda alive is to talk about the past and to talk about these other things. I think American voters, they understand what happened on January 6th. It really was a really tough day for our country, but they're looking at what's going on now and they're looking towards the future. And we need a commander in chief who's focused on getting America back on track. All right, Congressman Woo! Byron Donald, thank you. We appreciate you being with us. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it 
anywhere else. Town halls are for the voters, not for the press, not for the person who's the moderator. Caitlin spent more time interjecting her own viewpoints or her own look, views on the situation. Me, the, the, those are actually facts, facts now. Facts. Now, are you, hold on, are you guys not going to interject your well, views on here? Do I get a chance to right, speak but now? If, if you're speaking okay, falsely, wait a second, wait a second, those were wait facts. A the town hall is for the president to speak to the voters of New Hampshire, not for this back and forth well, that's with, not with true. media. Who that's number that? one. Hold on. That's hold on. That's number one. Number two, with respect to Ukraine, I totally disagree. He did not say he was just going to give over Ukraine the way you intimate, Van. He did not say that. He didn't say he what would, he said. He did was, not say that he Van, would. Van, what he, a ver- Van, what a he said was is that he would actually look for a solution to end it quickly. He put 24 hours on it, but let's be very clear: what Joe Biden has done has been a disaster because initially with Ukraine. Joe I'm Biden sorry. wanted to give Vladimir Zelensky a, a ride out of Dodge. He wanted to give him a plane ride. And it wasn't until people in Moscow, in Ukraine, here in the United States said this invasion is wrong that Joe Biden reversed course. Do you want a victory in Ukraine? Do you, do you, do you, do you want a victory in Ukraine? I'm just trying to respond to everything that's been coming up on the sure. table. Sure. Last thing, let me say this. Um, we spent 20, 22, 23 minutes talking about January 6th. Uh, We could have been talking about a whole lot of other issues instead of doing that for the first half hour or so. But let me be very clear. What was said in this town hall about National Guard troops that were authorized by by Caitlin was wrong. I'm on the oversight committee. I was in two hearings on January 6th. It was testified in oversight that Donald Trump authorized National Guard troops on January 4. He followed up in a call with then acting De- Secretary of Defense on January 5, trying to see where the deployment was on those troops. That is testimony in the Oversight Committee. Everybody testified in Oversight Committee when Nancy Pelosi was Speaker of the House, except one organization, and that was the Capitol Police. Did you read the Secretary Nancy of Pelosi Defense's would book? not allow that. The, it, I'm, tell- well, I'm telling you what was testified right. to. And the oversight what, committee right. under oath. Well, let me just correct you, because what Caitlin was saying was what w- the former Secretary of Defense sure. wrote in his book. He said the president did not. I, I am telling you what, was, what, what he testified to under oath. I, I, the oversight committee. Congressman, can I just ask? Are the facts. Go ahead. Do, you do acknowledge Donald Trump lost the 2020 election, correct? Again, we're going to continue to talk about 2020. No, I mean, it's a direct yeah. question. Right now, hold on. Let me we, tell, we let me tell, you, let me tell what, you why most voters are, frankly, kind of tired of y'all bringing this up. Inflation, you, border. You don't have the courage to even, express your America, opinion about what happened. I'm a Republican voter. I'm a Republican voter. Voters want to talk about inflation, election? the border, fentanyl, the debt ceiling, foreign policy. If you want to talk about the democracy. 2020 election, let's talk about this. We do know that Mark Elias was in many jurisdictions suing to actually change election procedures, which, by the way, is at the hands of the state legislature in every state, according to the Constitution, not in the hands of courts, not in the hands of the Supreme Court, the state legislature. We do know that to be a fact. We do know that true. You won't state your opinion about actually factually what happened in the 2020. You guys election? want me to make a state. And this is Frank. Let me tell you right now. This is what's frustrating. Want you to to just of, this is what's frustrating to a lot of people. You want me to state it the way you want me to say. No, I am telling you. I want you to just the answer the ideas question. And the do you believe why certain people do you believe the, the election was written the way that it, they do? I understand why. Now, some people moving believe forward it, into you? 2024, a couple of things are very, very clear. The nation is a mess. Our border is overrun. Inflation is crippling every family, Republican, Democrat, Independent. Those are do the you facts think, of the matter in 2024, not 2020. Can I ask you a question? Not 2020. Can, can I ask you a question? Sure. And I understand that you don't feel that uh, the last election and questions about the last election and the insurrection should be part of the discussion now. But since the president was there, since he was the one who was propagating these stories about uh, a a rigged election, and he repeated it again tonight, since uh, he was the one who rallied the crowd that that stormed the Capitol that he celebrated tonight, I want to ask you this one thing, because I was interested when he was talking about his case uh, that was decided yesterday by a jury, and he said, well, that was rigged. It was a Clinton-appointed judge. A lot of Trump-appointed judges threw out these allegations of election rigging. Should they be trusted because they're Trump-appointed judges, or are they rigged, too? Listen, every candidate that runs for office, everyone, I've run for office, you're allowed to contest an election. We all have that ability. You have the ability to go to court and do that and and all those types of things. He's had the ability to do it. Right now, he was making a statement very clearly about how he still feels about the 2020 elections. But he's also looking forward prospectively. The point I'm making is Caitlin didn't want to do that. She wanted to hang in and continue to talk about the 2020 elections until she got the answer she wanted. Let's be very clear on that one. uh, Listen. Uh, I, I want to say on Caitlin's behalf, she did a masterful job 
of fact-checking a live machine in real time in front of millions of people. It is very, very difficult to do what she did. Uh, I mean, nobody's going to do it perfectly, but it is incredibly difficult uh, to talk to somebody who is going to say things, sometimes they're true, sometimes they're not true. I don't think anybody here thinks that Donald Trump is, is, a, is a paragon of truth-telling. I thought Caitlin did a masterful job. She's a matador against While the While facing sexist attacks throughout. Yeah. And I mean, I, I, I'm someone who cares about securing the border, lowering inflation. Why can't Ron DeSantis do that? Why can't Kristen Nunu do that? There's a plethora of Republican candidates who want to do the things for our country that I know you want to do and that I want to do and David Urban wants to do. Why is it a man who's twice impeached, who's been indicted, who's been just held liable for sexual abuse? That's the best and only person who just yeah. once again I'm called a, a woman I'm a leave the indictment child. alone for a second, but let's be very clear. The reason why is because Republican voters want him to come back. Because he's lied to them Hold incessantly. On, stop, stop, stop. He actually did the job. You know that. And frankly, he did the job better than the current president right now. And that is indisputable. What, 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 Name Michelle, the issue. So, so, Donald I, Trump I, did I, it better. I, 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 how about infrastructure? We, we had infrastructure week every you week. You mean the bloated yeah. bill that they passed yeah, 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 through yeah, that, that they still haven't started what, constructing it, it, on I, I mean the zero on, bill that you passed. You had infrastructure on, week man. every every week for, so, two, for four years and never got one done. Is there anything that the... Look, I accept... That I, I think that he probably, if I were his political advisors, I actually would say this is what we wanted. We had, we got what we wanted. Yeah. He was talking to his, he was talking to his base, uh, and he rallied his base. If I were his lawyers, I'd be deeply concerned about what, well. what he, he, he uh, what he said tonight. Uh, but is there anything that, is there anything that would exclude him, even if he is someone who Republican voters want back in office because of the things he did? In terms of policy, like, could he go out and kill somebody? Could he? Is there anything that would be that, that you would consider beyond the pale? Or would you just set every, everything aside and say, well, this is what people want? So those picadillos Listen, we're going to let, let alone. At the end of the day, this is always going to be at the hands of the voters. The voters are going to decide who they want to support. Polling would dictate that they want to support Donald Trump by a wide margin in the Republican Party. I will also say the ABC polling is pretty clear that Americans writ large want to support him over Joe Biden. So we've, polling has come up, so I now have to have to intervene. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, oh, yeah, no, that, 